In phase one of Project Ellipse, the BIS Innovation Hub partnered with the Monetary Authority of Singapore, the Bank of England and the International Swaps and Derivatives Association ISDA, to explore the concept of cross-border digital regulatory reporting using a machine-executable data model. This is a demonstration of this proof of concept for the digital reporting of retail mortgages for the UK and Singapore using the CDM. This view of the CDM shows the location of the rules and the namespace for our project under BISIH. Here you will see the rules displayed as a textual view. Along the bottom of the screen, you will also see a tabulated view of the reports that we have generated for the UK and Singapore based on our model. The tabulated view is displayed as a set of reporting fields that we developed for our pilot. Scrolling from left to right, you will see a common set of reporting fields across both regulations. Before going through the details of the model, you can also access the model using the graphical view as shown here. The graphical view displays the different elements of the CDM and the entity relationship between the different data types. For this demonstration, we will focus on the representation of a retail mortgage. There are three dimensions that we looked at in the modeling of the mortgage CDM, which were the representations of a transaction, representations of the party, i.e. the borrower and the lender, and the representations of the property. A property is modeled as part of the mortgage and serves as collateral. Before going into the details of the model, we will return to the textual view to show how we constructed the retail mortgage report. To validate the construction of the reports, we mocked up two very simple dummy mortgage transactions. These hypothetical mortgage transactions were then used for the two different test cases, UK and Singapore jurisdictions, which you can see here at the bottom of the screen. Each of them is underpinned by a JSON test file. When we click on either of those test cases in a tabulated view, it will open up visualizations of each JSON file. This JSON file is displayed in a tree view. But if you are interested in seeing the raw data, you can also click on the View as Code and it will display all the details on the raw information as it pertains to the test cases. Going back to the tree view, we can also expand the view for the first test case, which was the mortgage reported under the UK rules. Here, you will find all the details that pertain to the collateral, the parties, i.e. lender and borrower, as well as the details about the transaction legs of the mortgage. We will now look at how the reports were constructed. You will see in this namespace, we've isolated two sets of rules. You can see on the top half of the screen the simulated rules for the UK and below the simulated rules for Singapore. In order to simulate these rules, we define a set of terms, a set of authorities and organisations which enable us to construct the reports. The first defines the report for the UK's PSD001, including when it is reportable, and what sets of fields are reportable. The same is applied for the MAS reporting displayed here. Each of these fields and eligibility rules will correspond to a set of definitions that are displayed in the rest of the namespace. Here, taking the example of the UK's PSD001, you will see that for the purposes of this POC, we have defined the eligibility rules and we have defined the Bank of England's reporting rules. These different reporting rules will effectively extract information from where it's located per the model for each of the jurisdictional use cases. 
you will see that if we scroll further down, you will have access to the reporting fields for Singapore. We will now look at how the digitization of the reporting rule works. Let's go back to the graphical view of the model as shown earlier. To do that, let's click again on the graphical view button. It brings us back to the representation of the transaction. Let's look at the representation of a property as collateral. Here, you can see in the model, we have represented property under collateral property and under this category, we can now see the different elements that have been used for representing, in a very simple way, the property that is being purchased. If we click on the node property, it will further expand a set of data attributes to illustrate how representations of a property could be constructed in the model. This also applies to the other nodes such as property valuation, purchase price, valuation dates, etc. Let's now look at the descriptions of the parties. In this case, a party can be represented with a different set of attributes, but not all of them are mandatory. Some are optional, depending on what we are representing in the context of an individual person. For a person, attributes using the CDM could be the name, possibly a party ID, and possibly a party relationship. If we expand the node for person, additional attributes can also be accessed. We can also access other types of information that would characterize a corporation. And as you navigate the model, we can access more information related to these attributes that you can see on the screen. So, depending on whether the parties are a person or whether the parties are corporations, we could use a subset of the different data attributes there. Let's go back to the name representations. Here, we will expand one additional item with regards to the borrower that was extended in the CDM for this pilot, which is representing credit details. You will see that we have characterized credit using such details as assets, debt, income, etc. If we look at assets, for example, the model further expands to show different types of assets as shown on the screen. This is also the case for when we look at debt as well as the borrower's income. And finally, we can not only see the borrower's income amounts, but we can also view the borrower's type of income. Let's now take a look at the representations of a loan itself. We have reused the CDM element of trade and tradable product, and within that, we have used the element of product. From there, you can see the element as already represented as a loan. Here, you can see that when clicking on the element of loan, we have a set of data attributes that represent a symbol mortgage product. And within there, we can also represent a set of installments for a fixed rate mortgage of two years by using the additional data attributes, characterizing what we've labeled as a loan leg for the two years.